Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk Spoilers, and let's get into the good stuff about Star Wars The Force Awakens. Oh, man. The good end. The good. The good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, I'm so happy to say, like, there's really, there's no bad in this movie. There's just, like, nitpicks, but, like, none of it is bad. There's not, like, you gotta really dig deep if you want to find yeah. anything wrong with this film. I mean, it's just... Uh... Where do you want to start with? You want to start with the like little and work our way up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Should we start from the beginning? Yeah. yeah. Like okay, so I'll start out with the Finn character. Okay, yeah. Um, I really like Finn. I know a lot. There's a lot of controversy going in with people like saying, you know, there can't be a black stormtrooper and everything. Those are obviously people who don't know Star Wars. I never understood. Yeah. That's ignorant people, right? Those there. are people like who've never played Star Wars Battlefront Two, which explain that. I think that like. It was it was the the original clones from Django Fett until just before A New Hope, and then they changed it to multiple clone pools. They re they reference yeah. in this movie that they they they, they, yeah. they they took the children and like raised them into the first yeah they order. abducted children and then like they even make a reference to clones in this movie like they say like because Finn turns to the turns to the good side like yeah. that's a that's a welcome change too like somebody turning to the good side we never really saw that with the exception of Darth Vader you know but like a character that like kind of flopped over to the good side you know and he was Finn the guy who played Finn what was his name? Boyega? Yeah, John, John, Boyega. John Boyega. He did such a good job because like, I immediately knew that was him in his Stormtrooper outfit before he even took his mask off because, like, the... First off, the heavy breathing. Like, <laughs> that's pretty much what we know him for. So. Yeah. <sighs> but, like, I could see, like, he's his acting was coming through that outfit. Yeah. Like, he was giving a personality. I was like, you could tell this guy's, like, con he's conflicted. Like, he doesn't want to do this. The introduction for every single character in this movie yeah. was great. Like, when I, when they open in this movie, like, I haven't seen an opening this good for a Star Wars movie since Episode 3. Oh, Because yeah. Episode 3 had a great opening. That, I gotta give credit where credit's due. That was one of, yeah, yeah. That was one of the biggest positives from Episode 3. Yeah, that was, like, probably, that was a great, great opening. And this this one had one just like you it. You know what's great? They didn't stop to sit and talk as soon as the action was over. There was no sitting and talking. This movie, this movie keeps on going. And yeah. that is a great thing. That can all that also led to a few little nitpicks. A few though, but things. Nothing bad though. Like nothing like this that ruins the movie. You know. So it's there's, like, there's no prequel eye rolling moments that you're gonna no, have to deal with. In there's this film. not. Um, so back to Boyega though and yeah. Finn. Like the thing was like what what was I even talking about with him? For, um, oh yeah, like the thing with the clones thing is like um, clone troopers. I think were completely phased out during Ep Empire or like right after the Battle of Hoth. Yeah. They just got rid of. Uh, clone, clone troopers entirely, and they just went to recruits, yep. uh, which he expl explains why, like in Return of the Jedi, they all sound so different and everything. And then, like, and by this point, it was like just at this point, it's just child abductees in this movie. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like the first, the first order in this in this film, they are savages. <laughs> They're evil. Like they, they, that was one of the problems with A New Hope is that like. They, uh, you never saw the Empire do anything evil. Like, okay, well, they did commit mass genocide and blow up Alderaan, but, you know. But, it's just like... You were told they were evil. Yeah, in this movie, you see it. They're evil. They're, they're not, yeah. And then, like, um, for... We'll, we'll work our way up to Kylo Ren. I yeah. posed an extra one I wanted to talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about Poe Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac. <laughs> yeah. Uh... My biggest problem, my, my my biggest problem is, and this is this is a good problem to have, I guess, because we'll probably get to see more. But I didn't see enough of Oscar Isaac's character in yeah. Poe Dameron. He, he does kind of disappear th in the middle of the movie, but I still liked him though. Like every scene, he was did. my favorite character. For every scene he's characters. in is amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! Like it's just a guy. This is a guy. Like we we say, like it's a guy. I just want to like, hey man, want to go grab a beer because you're yeah. kind of an awesome dude. Like <laughs> yeah, like I just like loved like. Because I've always loved the X-Wing pilots and the Rogue Squadron and everything. Um, which is something I want to mention real quick. Is just like, I'm really disappointed that Wedge isn't in this movie, Wedge Antilles. Because I know they offered his a his actor to come back and he said no. Yeah. He said it would form or something. It's like, I hope he comes back in the next movie. Because like, it really did feel empty that there wasn't that Wedge cameo that like every movie had. I was like, oh. Uh, okay. And now that we've talked about Finn and, uh, and Poe... Uh, in the beginning, they uh, there were two characters meet up very early in the movie. Yeah, and uh, and they got chemistry right off the bat. Oh like, yeah, it's like Luke Skywalker, Han Solo chemistry. Like you know, like and you want to see these guys become friends. You want them to have that friendship. 
And even though, like, when they get separated in the movie and then they come back together towards the end and they first see each other and they run up and, like, hug each other, I was like, I was, yeah, I, man. I was like, these guys, these guys are bros. It's like, like I life. want you to be bros, too. <laughs> it's like, when they first... And, like, it was great for Finn's character, too, because, like, Finn, like you said, like, he was raised to do one thing and be a stormtrooper because he was abducted as a kid from his family and everything. And, like, when you see him make that connection with people and with Ray too, with Ray, yes. like, it's great to see him, like you know, grow in that sense. He was a great character. Yeah, he talks about how he's, like, all he, all he, all he knew was being in the First Order uh, uh, his whole life. And then when he, and then he meets Rey on Jakku. And that pretty much changes his whole perspective on people. Mm -hmm. Where he looks, he says, like, he never knew he could, like, connect with people the way he did with Rey pretty instantly. And that's, you know, we, so we meet Rey on Jakku. And she's, and from what you guys expect, it starts off with her in the Star Destroyer that you saw in the trailer. Yeah, she's pretty much, like, she is very much Luke Skywalker, and right. that is really cool. But it's like, you know, like, that was one of the little nitpicks I did have with this movie, is that, like, you, after a while, you can kind of call what's gonna happen. You know, like, they blow up another Death Star at the end. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, you know... Like, this movie has a lot of references to A New Hope. Yeah. But it, not, it, but not to a point where I was like, uh, "This is the same." No, it, yeah. it had plenty of original. It had parallels, but like it, there was enough. The story was good enough to carry it along. In fact, after we, let's talk about Ray and then Kylo Ren, and then we'll talk about the story. Okay. So like with with Ray though, she was great. Um, you know, like I know a lot of people also brought politics into this thing too. Of like, you know, that like, oh man, like they're pushing like the whole like strong female character thing. Like, like Carrie Fisher was 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 a, you know to me like the archetypal of the strong female character i mean she still needs saving and everything like ray she still needs saving in this movie yeah you know and things like that but like i was happy that she, I, I still liked her as a character i was rooting for her throughout the movie and there was a scene where like she first like just like when luke like first used the light the force to grab his lightsaber in the wampus cave yeah she had a scene like that where she first grabbed like luke's lightsaber oh yeah big spoiler yeah. right there she uses the lightsaber. yeah she uses a lightsaber uh, uh finn uses it like he what do they call it like red herring kind of red herring it yeah yeah like he uses the lightsaber but like and he's he's pretty good with it yeah so that makes me wonder like will finn try to be like try to become a jedi also because like he wasn't bad with it like he put up a fight with that lightsaber but yeah. i'm thinking like i can definitely see like poe is going to be like the new han solo kind of like the daring guy and everything um finn probably be like what would you see him being? I know Ray's definitely the new Luke Skywalker. Yeah, because they made they made reference after reference of her, the Force being strong with her. Which and from when we saw the trailer, all we saw was John Boyega with the, John Boyega with the lightsaber. Yeah. And then you watch this movie, and you just see, it's it's all about it's all about Daisy Ridley character as Ray, just having having been, having the Force strong with her. So I was like. Okay, maybe she's going to be the main focus as the Jedi in this trilogy. I could definitely see, like, Luke, like, wanting to train uh, Finn, too. And, like, I could see him. Maybe he's, like, more of a Mace Windu character. Like, because Mace Windu, like... Possibly, He yes. really didn't use the Force a lot, but he was an excellent fighter. And he was yeah. a strong warrior. And I can really see him being more of that kind of Jedi if he were to become a Jedi. Uh, like, he would be Mace Windu. Yeah, I, like I like that kind of Jedi. I'm personally hoping, like, just Poe Dan Like, Poe and Finn just become, like, that... Like, that duo. Yeah. For the, for their, for the, the bromance lines. duo, yeah. yeah. Um, and for, like, yeah, like, Ray, she was a great character, though. I really liked her. Um, she was interesting and things like that. Uh, BB-8, man. That, <laughs> Hilarious. That That's was that say. was really funny. I mean, that was, like, he was great. Like, at first I was like, oh, he's just there for the kids, but I liked him. Like, he had so much personality, and he was great with R2-D2. And, like, I like the thing, like, in the movie, they kind of made it that he almost looked like he looked up to R2 and C-3PO. Yes. And C-3PO and R2, like, they're not in the movie. They're more like, they're cameos, basically. Yeah. But, you know, not so much C-3PO. Like, he's in the movie Yeah, but pretty much R2, as much R2, as... R2, R2-D2 makes does, a late appearance. Yeah, he doesn't come in until the end. But, like, you can see that, like, um, BB-8, like, looks up to C-3PO and R2-D2 because he knows how much they've been through. Yeah, I, I... I'm not gonna lie. When I first got introduced to BB-8 before the film came out, when they first showed BB-8, yeah. I was worried that I was like, "Oh, this no. is gonna be a Jar Jar Banks." I was like, "This is this is Disney doing the little cutesy thing that mm. got going there." I was wrong. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, what else is there? Okay, so Kylo Ren. Um, Where do we start with Kylo Ren? Um, I was worried about him. You know, 
and we said in our last video, he's not Darth. He's not as good as Darth Vader. Like, like there's some scenes where like they try to make him like have those moments of just like, you know, somebody's gonna get killed or something like that. But it's just like it's not as intimidating because like with him, you can see like more of it. He lets go of his anger more. Like where he just uses his lightsaber and starts smashing Slash up a console, shit. a console or but something. When he did hit the first force choke. Yeah, like oh he he God. has that he has that feeling of that Darth Vader had like. You just feel that, like, that... We explained this in our top ten epic Star Wars um, video. When, when Vader first used it to choke the guy in um, episode four, he has it has that kind of moment, too, where you're just like, oh, my God, like, shit's happening right now. The thing now. that makes his character unique is, like, you you fear Darth Vader in the original films. And you look at Kylo Ren. It is a... He, you fear him because he's unpredictable. Yeah, but, like, his whole story is that he's, like, afraid that he is not going to ever be as good as Darth Vader. Yeah. And here's the big reveal in the movie. He's Han and Leia's son. And that's why he has the, the helmet of Darth Vader. Because he is... He wants to be the next Darth Vader. Which, I don't know why. I mean, this kid just fucked everything up. As to as to exactly how he got to the dark side and what draw, like, drawed him to that side... We, we need another prequel trilogy! Uh, <laughs> we, have, we, have, we haven't had those answers questioned yet. They did reference uh, the fact that Luke... Was training him and it, was it, was, yeah. what, that's that's my question. Did, what did he tra was he training him? Because they mentioned that he was training somebody that I betrayed think that, him. Do you, I think that like it was. Um, did you see the? Uh, there was that one flashback shot because like, he was no like he was a uh, the Knights of Ren yeah. is what he led he led like a clan and then they even showed like in like a flashback or a dream sequence a glimpse of like his entire like clan like uh -huh. the the or the the Knights of Ren or something like kind of like a Knights of the Round Table type thing. Yeah. But anyway, like they showed this group and they all have like the similar um helmets on and everything. So what I'm thinking is is that the Knights of Ren were the Jedi that Luke was trying to um trying to train and Snoke, who I really like Snoke. I'm he was pretty good. Like he was a good he was a good update to the Emperor. Um Andy Serkis, you know, great as you know anything that he does like his voice and everything he's the one who says there's been an awakening have you felt it yeah so, at, first, at first when they showed him and he was this big giant thing they were talking to i yeah. was like for a second i was like what the fuck is that yeah but then i realized it was a hologram yeah so i'm like okay and they was, keep him in enough mystery too this is like when you first meet the emperor in the in the empire very Strikes similar Back. to that yes but anyway going back to kylo ren like his um with his character, though, like I think that like the Knights of Ren were the Jedi that Luke was trying to train, and then Snoke got into their heads and then pulled them away, and Luke felt so ashamed that like oh my god, like to me like Luke has the mentality right now of like okay, the Jedi and the Sith are way more trouble than they're worth, so I'm instead of like trying to bring this back, I'm just gonna go into hiding and hope that it goes away, and not knowing that Kylo Ren has basically started a new empire. Yeah, he. he you get the sense that he's almost, he just feels ashamed because he felt he just feels like he made everything worse. Where, yeah, where they were like they spent so long trying to fix everything, and it's nice to see that the galaxy is fixed in this movie. It is the Republic again. It is like it is you know back the, to the way. But it, the First freedom. Order is on a comeback. Yeah, it's like the First Order is pretty much the rebellion in this movie, and they like oh they own the planets that nobody gives a shit about. It seems like like yeah. outer rim planets. And they do kind of do a slap in the face to the prequels in this film. I think they blow up Coruscant. Uh, Coruscant. Is it Coruscant that they I blow up? I, there's a scene where they use that super weapon that we've all uh, Star speculated killer. about. Star killer. Yeah. It's called. Yeah. And, uh, and they take out an entire uh, planet system uh, because they wanted to completely destroy the Republic. And I'm pretty sure they destroyed Coruscant. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I had enough attachment to Coruscant though from the prequels like there were some there's some okay things that happened yeah. they're like I, I honestly just thought it was a cool design like not the place where I wanted the Jedi to reside but like you know like some things happened there so like, I had enough to attachment to it to say like oh my god like they just blew up Coruscant that's you know? and that that scene just that, yeah you, it's 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 that wow it was kind of heart-wrenching too it's like oh yeah. man these guys do mean business yeah like they, like they just said all right let's like this this thing they they reference they reference in the movie this thing is like eight times the size of the Death Star yeah but like and then um, but it got destroyed the exact same way as the Death Star and then like with the uh, with Han Solo like he was great in the movie like we mentioned that in the last review yeah. but 
Um, yeah. Um, We're still coping with the fact that he died. He dies in this film. Han, going into it, I always said that Han Solo was, like, the last one I wanted to die. Like, I always said, like, if Luke dies, I'll be okay because I know he can come back as a Force ghost like Obi-Wan. Uh, maybe even Princess Leia, or she's General Organa now, sorry. That just sounds so much better, General Organa. It does. It sounds fun. It sounds awesome. Yeah. So, like, you know, and she's really good in this movie, too. I really liked her. And you feel that her and Han still have a connection. Yeah. And, like, I loved it, like, when they first saw each other, like, it was just, like, an emotional hug. Like, he was comforting her. It wasn't, like, a whole... Thing. It was just like you know, like you feel like you two have such history and chemistry. Like I'm just I'm happy to see them on the same screen again. Yeah, I I I predict I've been saying for a long time I felt like they were they were gonna kill off one of our characters that were close to us. Yeah, and I fi I figured it was gonna be Han. I thought it was gonna be Chewie to be honest. Yeah, I, for I I did th I did almost kind of switch over to Chewie, but I was like something just kept telling me it's gonna be Han. That didn't make it any less easy to watch it happen. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm still sitting with it. Like, at first I was like, I hate this movie. You just killed off Han Solo. But then like, after I was like, and, you know, like, and that shows that the movie has some guts. Like, they're, they are trying to do something different. And that was a really big parallel between the, um, it was like, it, it played out a lot like the scene where uh, Obi-Wan and where Vader kills Obi-Wan. It was like, pretty much Kylo Ren says the same thing. I've been waiting for this day or whatever. Yeah, I feel like we should talk about how. Han Solo died because yeah. that has some significance. Uh, so, obviously, it, they make it clear that Han and Le by the way, it's Han and Leia's son. Yeah, yeah. Are you, like as you mentioned, and they make it clear that the fact that they know that their son is Kylo Ren and he's leading the First Order, and Leia tells Han, "If you see our son, bring him home." And when they're on when they're on the start they're, when they're on the Star Killer. Uh, preparing to attack it he sees he sees kylo ren and that's when we learn what kylo ren's real name is which is ben yeah and to me that was one of my little bit of the problems with the movies like when they reveal that he is han and leia's son they just say it it's yeah. like it's very glanced over like they never give it time to sink in like to me if like they it was like a big reveal kind of like the i'm your father thing like we still had a lot yeah. of people gasping like oh my god when they when they said it yeah. but i just feel like just it should have it should have been It was been just way more... too gla glanced yeah. over. And then, like... But, like, to me, like, the perfect reveal would have been, like, when he first said, calls him by his name and goes, Ben. And then, like, the, and then he did that. That would be, like, the first time he takes his mask yeah. off and everything. And then it reveals, like, you are... Like, that's my son. Uh, I don't know what they did with the sound design when they when he yelled Ben. But, like, with the way that, like, the way they had his voice echo when he yelled his son yeah. the first time... But that made me. That gave me chills. Like I don't. I don't know why. Like that. That part affected me so yeah. much. But it was just so well done. Yeah, and right away when that happened too, I knew I was like, yeah, only one of them was gonna come out alive. Yeah, I was like really upset. And he tried. Basically, what happens is Han goes up to goes up to Ben, Kylo Ren, to keep that clear, <laughs> um, and tries to tell him, it's you can still come home. It's you don't you don't need to. What's what's the guy? What's the the guy that, that's training him? I, I haven't memorized his Snoke. Yeah, he's like you don't. He's like you don't trust Snoke. He'll he'll just betray you in the end. He, he's gonna crush you when he's done with you. And and it looks like for a second Kylo is is saying, I give me is asking Han to give him the strength to leave. And he's and he's trying to and he's trying to hand him the lightsaber. And when that happens, I can see though. Like I don't think I think he just played his father. He yeah, I don't know. I don't know how hundred percent legit that was. Yeah, but yeah, I think I he, think he made us like they did a good job. Well, like now we hate Kylo Ren, and like I'm pretty sure like the actors act actually gonna get some death threats now. Like <laughs> like I, this is the first time for a Star Wars character. Like I love Darth Vader in the original trilogy. No, I hate Kylo Ren. Like yeah, like I don't get me wrong, I love his character. I hate him. I, yeah. I, 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 in the movie. I hope he, I hope he dies. I was personally hoping that Luke would just come in and fuck him up at the end, but unfortunately that didn't happen. Instead, we get to see a little bit of Ray. Yeah. Uh, have a really good, really, really yeah. gritty. Ray is duel. Ray is the one who's be, who becomes a Jedi. It's not Finn. Yes. Although Finn does throw down a, a couple times in the movie with the lightsaber, and he's good at it too. Yeah. Uh, like I said earlier, like was it? In, it was in this video, right? That I said that like, I could see him be more like a Mace Windu Jedi. Um, yes, it was. Yeah, video. it was in this video. Okay, yeah. So yeah, like I could, I could see him be more of a Mace Windu Jedi, like, and everything. But yeah, like the lightsaber battles, like they weren't as choreographed as the originals, which like I expected because like, 
Um, it makes sense, because they're both not as skilled with a lightsaber, because they haven't had the time to use it. But they, they, they felt so much more intense yeah, they than did. the prequels. Like, whenever the lightsabers hit each other, it feels like, oh, man. Like, like sparks are flying, and just, yeah. oh, man. And Kylo Ren's lightsaber, when that thing powers on, yeah. you feel that thing. Like, the sound design for that is, like, really brilliant. Really good. Like, yeah, I really love the whole, I love the whole thing. Like, I love the movie. It was great. Um, you know, like, oh, Admiral Ackbar is back, you know. It's more like he's a cameo, though, like, and things like that, you know. And then Max von Sydow, like, I was surprised he didn't really have a big part in the movie. You know, like, I saw him, like, oh, maybe he'll come back. Oh, you know? yeah, one thing we need to talk about is Luke Skywalker, as oh, most yeah, of Luke, you are Luke. probably wondering, is he in the movie? Yes, he's in the movie. For, like, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. People said, a lot of people were like, why was Luke Skywalker a cameo? I wouldn't say he was exactly a cameo. He was used to set up the next movie. He le they left it on the perfect cliffhanger. Yeah. I'll say that, like, Empire Strikes Back had, like, the biggest cliffhanger in movie history. Like, this one, this one kind of one-ups it on the cliffhanger right. thing. Because, like, the part when you first see Luke, I kind of want to, like, my personal little nitpick for this scene is, like, when she first gets to the island, um... I wanted her to see, like, maybe find his old Rogue, Rogue, uh, or Red 5 X-Wing, mm -hmm. maybe there before she found him, but, like, that's just my personal thing, but, like, yeah. you see him on the island, like, he's in, like, again, I, wa I really wanted to see him, like, in his black robe and everything, I thought he looked way cooler than that, but anyway, yeah, again, you see him in his robe and everything, and, like, when he first, like, you see he's got his robot hand and everything, and when he first pulls his hood back and everything, he's got the beard and the long hair, I was like... You see him, you look like, like he's been through some I was like, shit. But I was like, that is exactly how I wanted Luke Skywalker to look. Like he almost looks, he almost looks like sad and broken. Yeah, he does look broken. Like, with like you almost see like a ray of light come into his, come into him. Like when you see his, she hands, she's like handing him his lightsaber, his old lightsaber. It's like, wow. And that's exactly the boost I needed after watching my favorite Star Wars character fall. <laughs> yeah. I just like I, I need I needed that I needed that light of hope to hit me. Yeah. <laughs> you needed that new hope. That, that new hope. You to needed hit me. that awakening. Have you felt it? Have you felt it? <laughs> so oh, man, so yeah. I we can we I can go on and on about I can, how much I, I love this movie. I mean, the X Wings I thought it was clever that they used the X Wing fighters where look just like the ones that the the original concept art for the X Wing fighters. Um yeah. now and the TIE fighters look great. I love the way they updated the technology because that was the thing like the technology, the problem with the prequels is that it made the technology in the in the Galactic Civil War and the original trilogy and everything look obsolete. Like, it got worse. Because, um, yeah, like, it's it, it just, and this is supposed to be, like, technology is supposed to be getting more advanced. Like, this one made it feel like it was advanced from the previous yeah. trilogy. Um, like, for instance, they added, like, secondary weapons and everything to the X-Wings and all that. But, like, I was really happy to see that. And plus... Um, I hope that in the next movies we get to see more of the iconic ships, like what they are upgraded to, like the Y wings and everything. Um, oh, and Captain Phasma. Let's talk about. Oh, that. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Uh, you would have thought Captain Phasma would be a big character in this film, based on her. She's on the Star Wars poster. Yeah. She's in the trailer. She looks cool. She looks cool. But we only get to see her for. Maybe two, three minutes total in the entire film. And she only has a couple of lines, but to be honest, like she has the same amount of screen time and as much, a much as much of a part as Boba Fett did in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, and that's why people, the people were right. She is the new Boba Fett, but she's not. She has as much screen time as him. Like, she she'll have a bigger part in the next movies coming up. Like now, maybe maybe, it, maybe what if it becomes like her personal vendetta? Like I want Finn. Like nobody screws me over like this yeah i think i think that's what's gonna happen yeah. she's gonna be going after Finn because because well she was she was the leader of all the uh, stormtroopers yeah and so he just completely it'll be kind of like how like with uh han solo like with jabba the hut like he was like being chased by jabba the hut all throughout the original trilogy like maybe this will be kind of like finn's subplot of just like he's ch being chased by captain phasma the entire time uh, uh -huh. so 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 many things that let's just like <laughs> There's so many conspiracies that I can think about, like, what's yeah. going to go on with the rest of the movie. Yeah. I went three years for episode seven, and now I'm just going to, now I'm already starting to think about what's, what's episode eight? What's, what's going to happen? Yeah. And then Rogue One is coming, yeah, we're going to have a Star Wars movie out every year, so it's just like. Yeah. Be prepared yeah. for the end of this movie. 
you some some of you what might you're gonna cry you're gonna cry you're gonna ejaculate a little bit <laughs> and you're not you some of you are not gonna walk out completely satisfied because some people don't like cliffhangers yeah like this is perfect this is like the perfect cliffhanger movie um and it gets you hooked because that makes you want to see the rest of them and you know and they're even they're even teasing you even more by releasing a prequel before the sequel it's like what they did at the end of arkham like with arkham city like because arkham city ended on like the batman arkham city game ended on such like a big like cliffhanger like or not even like a cliffhanger just shit happened at the end you're just like i gotta know what happens next yeah. and then they release a prequel to tag you along until you get to the sequel so it's like it's kind of like that it's just like you know it was great i loved it i love yeah. the updates on the stormtroopers i think they look great you know it was great seeing practical effects again and stormtroopers can actually shoot in this film like, yeah and just uh so much i can't i i can't i i, I can't think of everything i need to talk about yeah i think we covered just about all like all most pretty much all the important aspects yeah of the this spoilers film. especially the big one that han solo dies but like oh if you're going if you're expecting to see luke skywalker as like a bigger part in this movie um he is like he is a big part in this movie, yeah. but he doesn't have any lines. Like he's only in it in person for like thirty seconds. But like the whole movie is like centered around Luke Skywalker, then trying to find Luke. Yeah. So the good news is, it was like I said, we do see Luke, and he at, uh, right at the end of the film. And the good news is, it looks like we're gonna see more of Luke as mm. a, as a big character in these next in the next two movies. So I'm like, that's fantastic. Because I was like, I was hoping he was not just gonna end up being the one and done character. Yeah. So, so, unfortunately for us, Han Solo was the one and done character. character. Yeah, but so that's gonna be too bad. Yeah, but uh, I can see them bringing him back, like Han Solo, back for like a flashback or something, maybe. Yeah, when Kylo Ren was younger. If that happens, I might, I'm, I'll, I'll lose it if they if they have a flashback with Han Solo after. One of them, to be fair though, like one of them did need to die. Um, the only thing that really would redeem though is they brought back Lando Calrissian. I, I think it's I think it's gonna happen eventually. I think there was a little bit of if anybody didn't catch it, there was like a little bit of maybe a reference to Lando Calrissian because like when they first get Luke's old lightsaber back, the one he lost in Cloud City from uh, what was her name? Oh God, uh, I really liked her character. Yeah, she was really good. There's like a little alien that they get it back from, and she's like, yeah. and she like um, Han Solo asks, he goes, Where, "How'd you get that lightsaber back?" And she goes, it's a long story for another time. I was like, ah, Lando Calrissian. You lost it on Cloud City. Remember yeah. that? It's a big, it's a bit. Maybe Lando found it. Yeah, and I mean, Billy D. Williams, he's still on about doing things, so. And he even said, like, don't give up hope. Like, I'll probably be back. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, because I asked him why it wasn't in the movie. He said, don't give up hope. I'll, I'll. Like, he's, he left the door wide open for yeah. him to go back. So I, I think it's going to happen. Yeah. And it will be. It'll make me feel, it'll, 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 that, that was good. And, oh, and then when Han Solo, after Han Solo passed, like, and I see, uh, if I see Lando in a Star Wars film. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to get emotional. I don't know <laughs> about, like, um, do you think they'll kill up any more of the old trilogy? Maybe, maybe Luke, maybe in the last film. Yeah, I could see maybe Luke dying in the last film, but other than that, I can't. Other than that, yeah, I think, I think, I think Han was... Yeah. Han is the one that... Because Harrison Ford has been begging to get killed off for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate him coming back and putting up a great performance. Yeah, everybody gave a good performance in this movie. There wasn't one bad performance. <sighs> Star Wars, guys. Yep. No. Right, so how many days to episode 8? That's... <laughs> Better start caught. The, the hype for episode eight is real. Uh, can we pre-order tickets? Because I'm ready. <laughs> Let's just take it one step at a time. The hype for Rogue One is real. Because I think Rogue One is going to have a hard time trying to get out of this movie's shadow. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, nobody even knows Rogue One is coming. Is it? It's next year, right? Yeah, it's next, next, next December. Yeah, like nobody knows that Rogue One is coming out. I, that's like, you guys better get on that. Uh, I, I, I personally have been looking forward to Rogue One. Yeah. But after seeing episode seven, it's like, do I really care at this point? Like, yeah. I just want episode eight. <laughs> so. Obviously, it's, if it's a good Star Wars film, I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. Like, there's no question about that. It's nice that we're finally getting some... Excuse me. It's nice that we're finally getting some expanded universe. Um, uh, you know. Can't stop yawning. <laughs> yeah, we've been out for a long time. We're pretty tired. Yeah, but it was well worth the wait, and it was worth only sleeping for the five hours in the past like probably 36 hours yeah but uh yeah so uh man. 
That's it? I think that about wraps it up right. for this spoiler talk. So that's it for me. As always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. And you guys can check out my channel, Hoop Studios. I'll be doing video reviews uh, for movies pretty soon, and all, as, as well as all my basketball mixes and fan-made trailers. And I hope you guys will enjoy that, so feel free to check it out. Link for his trailer or his channel will also be in the description below. And remember, we waste our money, so you, you don't, don't have, have to. to. Thanks for watching.